Now, after 15 rounds of vote, the U.S. House of Representatives elected Republican leader Kevin McCarthy of California as speaker after four days of tension. He won with 216 out of 428 possible votes to become the 55th Speaker of the House. And it was the longest speaker contest in 164 years. His election followed a chaotic night on the House floor, including an extraordinary confrontation between McCarthy and Rep. Matt Gates during the 14th round of voting. He overcame a fierce challenge to his leadership by a group of far-right members that led him to make steep concessions we suggest a contentious two years ahead. President Joe Biden, in a statement, congratulated McCarthy on the victory, saying, quote, This is a time to govern responsibly and a time to ensure that we are putting the interests of American families first, end quote. For more on the new leadership of the U.S. House of Representatives and U.S. politics, global affairs analyst Calvin Dark joins me from Morocco here in Africa. Good to have you join us. Good to be here. I see that you have um, a different scene. Um, you're in Africa. But let's talk what's happening in the House, um, in the House of Representatives. I read a piece earlier um, that said the, the, the speaker fights, I just want to quote it right, the speaker fights over, but the chaos is just getting started. Do you think that uh, perhaps this is going to be a difficult um, um, tenure for uh, Kevin McCarthy, looking at all that has, has gone on in the House? Yes, this is going to be a very, very difficult um, two years if he makes it that long, simply because, look at it, we had an historic vote, historic round of 15 votes for just the Republicans to elect their leader. This wasn't over any particular piece of legislation. It wasn't over controversial policy. So if it goes this far when they're picking their leader, what happens when we have to keep the government open? We have to... Um, uh, have a budget when we are trying to solve immigration. So I think that was the reasoning behind Joe Biden's um, congratulatory message that it's now time to govern. But if the last week was any indicator, it's going to be a lot more messy. Mm. And the first task at hand, perhaps um, this week, is to make the rules that will govern the House for the next two years. Um, the House has to do that. The, the Senate do not necessarily have to do that. But how difficult do you think that would be, considering all the concessions he has had to make um, with the, the far-right members and far-right caucuses of, of the Republican Party? Well, see, there are two parts, and this is what I, I think is unfortunate about the situation. First of all, a lot of the rules that Kevin McCarthy, now Speaker, had to agree with, agree to, really weaken him as speaker. Um, you know, there's even one rule that one member of the House Representatives can um, call for his vacation, vacate his office. And of course, it'd have to be up for a vote, but imagine how it would slow things down. And also, the second part of this, in addition to the rules they're going to try to pass today, there is a secret, in quotes, um, I think it's a three-page set of agreements that Kevin McCarthy has to do with those 20 members, like um, committee assignments and things that he will and will not do. So it's going to be a challenge to get those rules passed today. And we don't even know what all those rules mean because they haven't made that secret pact um, public yet. Hmm. I want to sort of broaden this out um, further, especially into just looking generally into the Republican Party and the road to 2024. And um, because some, Kevin McCarthy was very loyal and is still very loyal to former President Trump. In fact, um, President Trump had called that he be, he be, he be backed by the far, far right members of the Republican parties who um, almost did not listen to him. Um, but some of those far right m members of the party are also Trumpers. Um, they're also those who echoed the um, voting fraud and, and all of the uh, supported Trump through the insurrection. So what does that say about the influence that President Trump, former President Trump still has in the Republican Party? I think it demonstrates that he does have influence, not as much as he had, say, a year, year and a half ago, because even though he did make some important calls that I think towards the end convinced some of the hardliners who weren't going to vote for McCarthy to kind of give in, all last week, you know, he was putting out statements. He was telling people, you know, support McCarthy. And you had a couple of people like Lauren Boebert, she's a um, Republican representative from Colorado, who stood up and said, Trump is my favorite president, but he's wrong. We don't need Kevin McCarthy. So I think as a presidential candidate for 2024, he's the only official one. He's the only Republican who's even said he was going to run. He has a lot of influence. But over the last year and a half, it has waned.
Mm. And, and and how do you see this playing out, especially for President Biden? Um, because it, it doesn't seem like Kevin McCarthy has a, a stronghold on, on the members of the House of Reps. And if he does agree with President Biden on, on certain, certain bills to be passed, it doesn't seem like he might be able to whip, whip his members of the Republican Party in line. So what does that mean for President Biden? Okay, it, for I'll give it to you two ways. On the legislative policy front, it's not good for Biden because he's not going to get anything done. We'll be lucky if they can vote on raising our debt ceiling, keeping the government open, basically the government functions. If we can agree to that, that's a major win. But he's not going to get any more of his agenda passed um, through the House of Representatives. That's one side. Now, on the political side, it does help President Biden. If President Biden runs again, which you know all indications are that he's going to run again, even though he hasn't announced it, this politically helps him. Because what the American people will see is the leadership of the Republicans in the House stopping everything from getting done. And now, he can, you know, when the midterms, people would say, you know, Biden has the House, the Senate, and the White House, why can't he do more? This gives him a foil where you can say, well, I would do more, but it's those Republicans in the House. So politically, this works for Biden's favor. We'll see how this plays out in the long run. Thank you so much for talking to us, as always, um, Calvin Dak, and enjoy your stay in Morocco. Thank you.